Hello and welcome to another interview in our top 10 inspiring women series. I am super excited today to introduce a woman who has been uh, an inspiration to me already in my career and who has taught me a lot of what I know about marketing and communications. Uh, Kali Turner, the founder of Heroic Gardens, which is an awesome nonprofit that uh, gives veterans a place to heal and recover from trauma through gardening and horticultural therapy. Uh, and in addition to that, she's had a storied career through different uh, marketing and communication roles in the health industry. So without further ado, I'm going to turn it over to Kali to give us some background on what you do and um, a little bit of information about Heroic Gardens. So Heroic Gardens is uh, just about to be three years old. Our mission is to connect U.S. veterans and their families with plants and nature, and we do this in a couple of ways. Um, one, we either help them with a transformation of their backyard space or their patio or their porch, uh, wherever they call home. Um, and secondly, we also provide a virtual horticultural therapy um, where we actually send customized kits with plants or plant-based materials, and then we unpack the activity with them and a registered horticultural therapist via Zoom. So it's been a fun way for us to expand our operation beyond the Delaware Valley uh, because we can reach anybody anywhere. Just what change do you want to see in the world and how are you aiding that cause? Our, our core values um, are community, compassion, and joy. And I think, you know, for us, we're a veteran service organization or a VSO. And um, for us, it's how many veterans can we touch? Because there is, um, there are over 1.6 million veterans that are coming back from service that are uh, reporting having symptoms of PTSD, anxiety, um, you know, mental obstacles. Um, of those 1.6 million, only 400,000 are saying they're receiving adequate treatment. And that's not a ding on, you know, hospitals or the VA. It's more that uh, perhaps there's a holistic approach. And so for us, it's how many of these veterans can we help for free? Um, and, and even if it's just introducing them to plants and nature, um, but also what does this, what's this commentary on anybody else that's volunteering? You know, it, this isn't just for veterans, right? Civilians can be involved. And how are we sort of tipping over with what we're offering um, to the veteran community into the civilian community? So, you know, let's get back to something that is all around us. It's in the food we eat. It's in the clothing we wear. It's in our building materials. We're surrounded by plants, and yet they tend to be one of those um, elements in human life that we ignore or destroy. Do you mind, I know you kind of talked about some of the positive benefits of horticultural therapy, but do you mind kind of explaining more about the science behind that, how that helps with healing? Yeah, so look, there's a, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of studies that are out there and a lot that, that continues to be um, happening from a breakthrough perspective. And for us, you know, we tend to shy away from horticultural therapy because surprisingly, um, a lot of people don't know what that is, right? So we say <laughs> social horticultural activities. But let me tell you what horticultural therapy is, because I think that's really important to understand, right? So it is that connection point between working with plants um, and you have a therapist present. And the reason you have a therapist present is um, if you are in therapy, if you've ever been in therapy, um, you know, somebody is helping set goals and helping you um, achieve those goals, right? So horticultural therapy is no different, right? There is a trained horticultural therapist that may have a specific um, degree of goals that they want to help the patient meet. Um, and so when we use plants, what we're looking at is behavioral changes or shifts, right? Because when you are working with plants, you're thinking about, um, the task, right? I've got to put this plant into soil and then I've got to make sure it's okay. And then I've got to care for it. And I've got to give it the nutrients that we as humans need too, right? Water, air, soil, nutrients, right? Um, I've got to care for it. So when you're doing something like that, 
you're not thinking as inward as you normally would, but you're thinking outward. 100%, this is about being present. And, and the other piece of this, of course, is if you're doing it in a, you know, we don't recommend large groups, for example, right? Because what happens then is you miss the one-on-one. -on -one. And that's been really tough with a Zoom environment, of course, because we've had to limit the number of folks that can participate on the Zoom. So we usually um, have about 15 with a registered horticultural therapist. And, um, you know, we work through that activity and everybody gets a voice. Everybody has the opportunity to share what they've been growing. Um, we all have successes and we all have failures with plants and that's okay. They're living things. We as people have the same thing with each other. Um, so yeah, it's been, you know, it's been a really interesting experience and what we like to say to the veterans, we don't talk about it in terms of horticultural therapy. We just say we're here to play with plants because that's what we're here to do. How did you push through a turning point in either your career or your life? And what did you learn from it? Oh my goodness. Um, you know, I, I think early on in my career, and today is like a really great day to talk about this, um, you know, I was out in the working world before the internet, right? Um, people were still smoking in the offices. And um, I think just being, being a part of the um, female workforce from then until now, there's a, there's a sensitivity shift that I think, you know, young women have um, more opportunity and, and are able to, to, take advantage of things that, that we weren't able to. And, and the learning from that is this, I can't, I can't change my past. Um, but I, I was able to learn a significant amount, um, on my own, like trust your gut. Um, because there are plenty of people out there that unfortunately may not want to see you succeed. And, um, for me, that, that was difficult, and it was, it was a time when I, I really needed to take a breath, and I didn't. I, there's a difference between transcending and transforming, and I chose to transcend, and the minute I recognized that and I decided to transform, um, I was able to identify sort of the goals that I wanted and, and and the pathway and it didn't necessarily the current environment didn't necessarily matter right it was more about how can i how can i get to the next level recognizing where i currently am um, how do you define success okay so this is a great one because I, to me you know success could be um it's very how, how do I tell you this? Uh, it's very visceral to me. So what I mean by that is, you know, somebody asked me recently, they said, how do you feel when, I don't know, you're happy or when you're sad or whatever. And I was like, I don't know, I feel happy, right? Well, if you, if you think about this, if you put your feet on the floor, right, and you are doing something really wonderful, what do you feel inside? Like, what are all those cells doing inside of your body? They're probably like, this is so cool. This is so amazing. Um, can you imagine if you had a job that percent of the time, that's, that's how you were feeling? I mean, to me, that's success, right? Because what's happening is the happiness factor inside of you is actually coming out and it's impacting everybody else. And when you impact people like that, your success rate goes up. So, you know, somebody could say to me, well, you don't have a million dollars. And that's how people, some people measure themselves. But for me, it's like, am I getting up and making a difference? Am I taking care of myself? Am I being the best person I can? And am I acting with compassion and joy? Um, if, if I can say yes to those things in a day, that's a really good day. All right, if you could go back and share some wisdom or guidance to your younger self, what would it be? 
Um, I would say, I would say, first of all, let, let's, let's not be so hard on ourselves. Why are you beating yourself up? Why are you setting these unrealistic expectations uh, for yourself? You know, you're conscientious, you have integrity, and, and what you believe is the best may not be somebody else's vision. So be okay with it. Be okay with, you know, the choices you've made. Um, be okay with the choices other people around you are making. Um, and, and find a way to, to live with that um, because it's okay. I, I, this goes back to, you know, what we were talking about earlier. I think that there was definitely an expectation. It was unspoken that you almost had to become like a bully or, you know, I, I, I think we were talking about this a while ago, like some of the names I've been called in my reviews because I had a strong opinion. Um, you can still have a strong opinion. Just figure out a clever way to deliver it. 